Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The domain of function f is the closed interval from 0 to 1. The codomain is the set of real numbers. Function f is twice differentiable. Its second derivative is continuous. We are interested in the limit as n tends to infinity of n squared. Between brackets, we have this difference. Integral x from 0 to 1, x to the n over x to the n plus 1 minus x to the n times f of x. The second integral is x from 1 half to 1 of f of x. What is the limit of this integral as n tends to infinity? Note that f is a differentiable function, so it is continuous. On the closed interval from 0 to 1, f of x is bounded. This ratio here is non-negative and is less than or equal to 1. If the magnitude of f of x is less than or equal to m, a finite positive number, the magnitude of the integrand is upper bounded by m. The upper bound is independent of n. The integral of m from 0 to 1 is m, which is finite. So if we are interested in the limit as n tends to infinity of this integral, we can apply the dominated convergence theorem and interchange the order of limit and integration. We can take the limit inside. What is the pointwise limit of this function as n tends to infinity? If n is equal to 1, this function is equal to x. As we increase n, this function looks like a sigmoidal function. It is 1 half when x is equal to 1 half. The limit of this function as n tends to infinity is 0 when x is from 0 to 1 half. At 1 half, the function is always equal to 1 half. If x is greater than 1 half, the limit is 1. In other words, this limit here is this integral, the integral x from 1 half to 1 of f of x. As n tends to infinity, the difference between these two integral tends to 0, but the difference is multiplied by n squared. What is the limit of the product? This integral can be written as integral x from 0 to 1 half plus integral x from 1 half to 1. Here is the first integral. These two integrals can be combined as minus integral x from 1 half to 1 of f of x times this bracket, 1 minus x to the n over x to the n plus 1 minus x to the n. Let's do a change of variables y equal to this ratio. Note that when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is 1 half, y is 1 half. What is x in terms of y? Take the reciprocal of both sides. We obtain 1 over y equal to x to the n over x to the n, that's 1, plus 1 minus x over x to the power n. Move 1 to the other side. Raise both sides to the power 1 over n. We get that 1 minus x over x is the nth root of 1 over y minus 1. This is 1 minus y to the power 1 over n over y to the power 1 over n. This side is 1 over x minus 1. Move 1 to this side. We obtain that x is equal to y to the power 1 over n over y to the power 1 over n plus 1 minus y to the power 1 over n. If n is 1, x is equal to y. When we increase n, the function looks like this. The derivative of this function with respect to y is 1 over n, y times 1 minus y, all to the power 1 over n minus 1. In the denominator, we have the square of y to the 1 over n plus 1 minus y to the power 1 over n. Now we write this difference in terms of variable y. This is dx. Do integration by parts. When y is 0, this product is 0. When y is 1 half, we have 1 half times 1 half times f of 1 half. That's f of 1 half over 4. When we do integration by parts, we also get minus integral y from 0 to 1 half. This ratio times the derivative of this product with respect to y. The derivative is function f plus y times the derivative of function f times the derivative of this ratio. We also do integration by parts here. When y is 1, this product is 0. When y is 1 half, this is 1 half times 1 half times f of 1 half. Because this is the lower limit of integration, we get 1 fourth times f of 1 half. Then we have plus integral y from 1 half to 1 of this ratio times the derivative of this product with respect to y. The derivative is minus f plus 1 minus y, the derivative of function f times this function of y. Simply find the result, we get 1 half f of 1 half. These two integrals can be combined as minus integral y from 0 to 1 of this ratio times f of this ratio. Then we have these two integrals, one from 0 to 1 half, the other from 1 half to 1. Our objective is to take this function of n, multiply by n squared, and then take the limit as n tends to infinity. How does this ratio behave as n gets very large? As n tends to infinity, this ratio tends to 1 half. Then we have a term that decays as 1 over n. How can we obtain this term? We can take the limit as n tends to infinity of n times the difference. This difference is y to the 1 over n minus 1 minus y to the 1 over n over 2 times y to the 1 over n plus 1 minus y to the power 1 over n. We can write the numerator and denominator in terms of the exponential functions. Expand each exponential. As n tends to infinity, we get 4 in the denominator. In the numerator, 1 minus 1 is 0. When we multiply by n, we get log y minus log 1 minus y. 
all the other terms tend to zero as n tends to infinity. So one over n here is multiplied by one fourth log y over one minus one. In a similar fashion, we can obtain how this function behaves as n gets very large. Regarding function f itself, it is twice differentiable as given in the problem statement. We can do Taylor expansions about one half. This term is the difference between the ratio and one half. Here it is squared. Concerning the first derivative of function f, we are mainly interested in these two terms. This is because in the expression of interest, f prime is multiplied by one over n. Let's start with this difference. Use the asymptotic expression for f. The first term is the constant f of one half. It's multiplied by this integral. If in this integral we replace y by one minus y, we get integral y from zero to one, one minus y to the one over n over y to the one over n plus one minus y to the one over n. These two integrals are equal. But if we sum them, we get one. This means that each is equal to one half. This integral is one half. These two terms go away. What is the impact of the other terms? This ratio is one half plus log y over one minus y over four n plus a function of the order of one over n cubed. We are interested in the terms that decay as one over n or one over n squared because this is multiplied by n squared and then we take the limit as n tends to infinity. If we consider the product of these two terms, we obtain integral y from zero to one of log y minus log one minus y. This is zero because these two integrals are equal. Now let's consider the product of one half times this term, which decays as one over n squared. We need to evaluate integral y from zero to one of the square of log y over one minus y. This is the integral of log y squared plus the integral of log one minus y squared. Replacing y here by one minus y, we get exactly this integral. So we have two times integral y from zero to one of log y squared. We also have minus two integral y from zero to one log y log one minus y. To evaluate these two integrals, we make use of this result, integral x from zero to one, x to the a log x to the b, is minus one to the b gamma of b plus one over a plus one to the power b plus one. In this integral, a is equal to zero, b is equal to two. The value of the integral is minus one squared, that's one, gamma of three, that's two factorial or two. We have one downstairs. So this integral is two, this part is four. What about this integral? Write log one minus y as minus summation over positive integer j of x to the j over j. Interchange the order of integration and summation. We obtain minus summation j from one to infinity, one over j. Integral x from zero to one of x to the j log x. Using this result here, a is equal to j, b is equal to one. This integral is equal to minus one over j plus one squared. One over j times one over j plus one squared is one over j minus one over j plus one minus one over j plus one squared. The sum with these two terms is telescopic and is equal to one. Then we have minus zeta of two minus one, minus one, because the first term here is one over two squared. This is two minus pi squared over six. If we multiply by minus two, we have minus four pi squared over three. This integral is pi squared over three. Recall that we need to keep track of all terms decaying as one over n or as one over n squared. We still need to consider the product of this term and that one. When we multiply and integrate, we get this result here. We have another two integrals to consider. Use the asymptotic expression for the first derivative of f. This part here is the derivative of this function of y. We can do integration by parts. When y is equal to one half, this is one over 16. It is multiplied by minus the first derivative of function f evaluated at one half. We also have integral y from zero to one half, the square of this ratio. Since our goal is the limit as n tends to infinity, we can focus on these two terms, one half and one fourth log y over one minus y over n. When one half is squared, we get one over four. We integrate y from zero to one half, we get one eighth times one half, that's one over 16. These two terms go away. We also obtain the integral of the square of this function of y plus the integral of double the product of these two terms. We handle this part in a similar way. Note that here we have one minus y, y is from one half to one. Like here, we end up with two terms. From here and there, we have one over 32 n squared, f prime of one half, integral y from zero to one, the square of log y over one minus y dy, on the previous page, we found that this integral is pi squared over three. This part is equal to pi squared over 96 n squared f prime of one over two. When we combine these two terms, we get integral y from zero to one of log y minus log one minus y. This is zero. So the relevant term is this one here. Let's go back to the two integrals we started with. We need now to handle the terms with the second derivative. 
we have minus integral y from 0 to 1 half, the second derivative of f at 1 half, log y over 1 minus y over 4n squared, because we have this 1 over n, we need only to consider the constants in the asymptotic expressions of these two ratios. We have 1 half and 1 over 4y times 1 minus y. We have y here, we can discard this y. To this integral, we add integral y from 1 half to 1, the second derivative, log y over 1 minus y over 4n squared, 1 half times 1 minus y over 4y, 1 minus y, that's 1 over 4y. In this integral, replace y by 1 minus y. We obtain integral y from 0 to 1 half, the second derivative, over 4n squared, log y over 1 minus y becomes log 1 minus y over y, which is minus log y over 1 minus y, 1 half, 1 over 4 times 1 minus y. Let's combine these two integrals. We have minus 1 over 16n squared, f double prime of 1 half, integral y from 0 to 1 half, log y, minus log 1 minus y, all over 1 minus y. We can split into two integrals, integral y from 0 to 1 half, log y over 1 minus y, plus integral y from 0 to 1 half, d of 1 half, log 1 minus y squared. These are the two parts that we have. Using the limits of integration here, we get minus 1 over 32n squared, f double prime of 1 half, times the square of log 2. To evaluate this integral, do the substitution, y equal to t over 2, when y is 0, t is 0, when y is 1 half, t is 1, dy is 1 half dt, the integrand becomes log t over 2 over 1 minus t over 2. The numerator is log t minus log 2. We split into two integrals. The antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus t over 2 is minus 2 log 1 minus t over 2. Using the limits of integration, we get minus 2 log 1 half. That's 2 log 2. These two terms become f double prime of 1 half log 2 squared, 1 over n squared, 1 over 16 minus 1 over 32. That's 1 over 32. What about the integral with log t? Do the series expansion of 1 minus t over 2 to the minus 1 and integrate term by term. This integral is minus 1 over j plus 1 squared. Take 2 from this 32 to have summation j from 0 to infinity, 1 half to the j plus 1 over j plus 1 squared. That's the dilogarithm of 1 half. The dilogarithm of 1 half is pi squared over 12 minus the square of log 2 over 2. Combining this result with this part, we get pi squared over 192n squared f double prime of 1 half. We have these two terms from the previous page, these two terms from this page, all other terms decay as 1 over n cubed. The second derivative disappears. The terms with the first derivative can be combined as minus pi squared over 96 n squared f prime of 1 half. We multiply by n squared to get that the limit of interest is minus pi squared over 96 times the first derivative of function f evaluated at 1 half.